What is up guys, happy new year, happy 2020. Big announcement, we now have a Spanish channel. This video that we are filming right now is also in Spanish. If you guys wanna check that out, there will be a link down below. If you guys speak Spanish and you wanna support the channel, subscribe, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Also, merch is still in effect. If you guys are interested in picking up some dope merch, there will also be a link down below. But let's kick off the year with the Mac Pro. This is a computer that I've been excited about for such a long time. It's a computer that I've been wanting Apple to build and they finally did it. It's a very expensive computer and I just didn't wanna do another unboxing video. There's already several out there, so check those out. I wanted to give you guys more of why I bought this computer and also the type of configuration that I spec'd out for the Mac Pro. So first off, we are Adobe Premiere users. That is what we primarily use. So if you are an Adobe Premiere user, stick around. Not to say if you're Final Cut Pro, you have to leave, but just understand that this configuration that we built is primarily for Adobe Premiere users. So let's start off with the base Mac Pro. That's not the one I got, but it's at $6,000 and comes with an eight core processor. Now, Adobe Premiere prefers higher clock speeds, so it doesn't really take full advantage of the GPU Kind of. So for us, having a higher clock speed was very important, but we wanted also more cores. And I felt that the 16 core model just offered that balance of still keeping a clock speed at relatively high. So the base one's at 3.5 and the 16 cores at 3.2. We don't really lose much, but we gain more cores, which again, I feel right now at the current state of Adobe, it just kind of made more sense as opposed to going something a lot crazier or even less if you're using Final Cut and you want to take full advantage of the GPU. Now, in terms of RAM, this is one where I highly recommend, it doesn't even matter what configuration you buy, get the 32 gigabyte model. It just does not make sense to give Apple so much money because you can do it yourself. Like that's the beauty of buying this machine. And if you're buying this machine, it's because you're gonna do it yourself for the most part. And RAM is just one of those areas where it's just so easy to do. And Apple does a really good job at allowing you to swap out the RAM very easily. So we went with a 32 gigabyte model and I ended up going to Amazon and picking up six sticks of 32 gigabytes of RAM, giving us 192 gigabytes total RAM, which Apple charges $3,000 to upgrade to 192. I spent roughly a little under $900 and it literally took me under two minutes to install. That's $1,000 a minute if you look at it that way. And Apple even shows you how to install it properly. They have a little diagram on the cover when you flip it around and it shows you if you have six dims, eight dims, it's really simple. Again, I highly encourage that you guys do it yourself. If you end up getting a Mac Pro, there's no reason you should spend or give Apple that kind of money. It makes no sense. So trust me, definitely worth it. And I'll leave the link down below to the RAM that I picked up if you guys are interested in buying some for yourself. In terms of graphics card, as I mentioned, Adobe really doesn't take full advan advantage of the graphics card. Hopefully, now with these Mac Pros, they make some changes and that could change. So I opted to upgrade the graphics card to the Radeon Pro Vega 2, which is a $2,400 option in hopes that maybe Adobe Premiere takes advantage of at least that card. If anything, we also do use DaVinci Resolve and I know with DaVinci Resolve, that's gonna be something really huge. We rarely use Final Cut Pro. We also don't use, or we don't really record in ProRes or ProRes RAW. So getting the Afterburner card didn't really make sense for us because A, it only works currently as of filming this video with Final Cut Pro and it doesn't really work in Adobe Premiere. So that was just kind of wasting money. Now in terms of storage, I know you can upgrade to your own storage and add as much and you can also do it in a PCIe. But for me, I just felt like I wanted to have it built in in case I wanted to use those PCIe lanes. And really, I am not going to use much storage internally, but I did want a little bit more. So I upgraded to the two terabyte. It was an $800 option. Most of the storage, actually all of the storage, how we use it right now is through our server. So we have over 100 terabytes of storage in our server, which I do plan to make a video on that and how we integrated with the Mac Pro. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe if you're you're not subscribed to the channel already, I do wanna make a video on that, but we already have storage that we use on our server, so anything locally is just going to be used for applications that we download, you know, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, After 
effects and all those little applications. So anything else really, I'm probably never gonna see it. So that is something that I did give Apple my money, just kind of wanted it to be integrated into the computer. So total price with the upgraded RAM that I bought from Amazon was a little shy over $12,000. Now I could have saved a little bit more money with the graphics card. As I mentioned, I did that more in hopes that Adobe Premiere optimizes it for that specific graphics card. You know, given that they kind of work really well with Apple, I figured maybe there might be an update soon, but you could save $2,400 there. But I've already tested this out and this works really great with Canon C200 Raw Lite and obviously pretty soon C500 that we'll be getting very shortly here. So if you are an Adobe Premiere user, I really feel that this is like the sweet spot configuration. And this is also me talking with other creators and a big shout out to Max Yurov, who has been really helpful in, you know, communicating and kind of figuring out what the best build is. That's one of the reasons why this Mac Pro took a while is because I wanted to make sure that I was gonna make the right decision. So upcoming videos are gonna be more Canon C500, 5K, 8K Red Raw, and other configurations, but mainly Premiere and also comparing it to other computers, including I also have a 16 inch MacBook Pro that I picked out, fully specced out. So I wanna show you guys a couple of tests with that. Not much of Final Cut because I don't really use it, but again, there's a lot of people that use Final Cut, Afterburner card and all that. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and also 2020 is gonna be awesome. A lot of great content, Spanish channel, check that out if you speak Spanish. My name is Armando, thanks again for watching. You guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.